This is an at t crew installing equipment that will be crucial for a new technology promising to change the country. That technology is called 5G and will make way for ultra-fast downloads and things like self-driving cars. The potential of 5G speeds and future uses has a lot of people excited. It's even sparked a global race to be the first to roll it out, and federal regulators are pushing for the US to get out in front. But exactly how far is the United States from becoming a 5G leader? And what will it take to get there? We'll get to that, but first, what can 5G actually do? It will be a hundred times faster than current mobile wireless networks called 4G. It could replace your cable service with wireless broadband as fast as fiber, if the carriers can figure the costs out. It will also add capacity for millions more devices, something required to support the growth of smart cities, connected homes and the Internet of Things. But it's another thing that gets the people I've spoken to the most excited, and that's latency. Let me use a demonstration from Nokia to explain. The robots here are talking to each other wirelessly and are tasked with balancing a ball in the center of the tray. The demo first shows them doing it with 4G and then again with 5G. The time it takes is reduced from 11 seconds to just 3 seconds with 5G. It's those tiny reaction speeds that experts say will make way for a whole range of exciting uses. Uh, new types of devices might come into play, like you could have glasses finally make it. Connected cars, uh, autonomous vehicles will generate a lot of data. It has to be processed at the edge and that's where 5G can play a significant role. Uh, VR is another area where you don't have to be connected to uh, a wire to experience something. So while 5G might be super fast, rolling it out will be anything but. So what will it take to get there? It is my intention for the United States to hold an auction beginning this November of Spectrum in the 28 gigahertz band. The Spectrum he is talking about are the airwaves that carry wireless signals. And an important part of pushing forward with 5G is to make them available to US carriers. The next step is infrastructure. These are called small cell antenna and many, many thousands more will be needed to power the 5G networks. A limitation of the new technology is the distance the signal can travel. 4G has a range of about 10 miles, whereas most of the technology being used for 5G now has a range of about 1,000 feet. So to fill in that gap, thousands of these backpack-sized antenna will be installed on things like light posts, electricity poles and traffic signals. And experts say that's not going to be cheap. You know, it's going to take billions of dollars. And um, I think billions of dollars in terms of spectrum, billions of dollars in, in terms of new infrastructure. And right now, the big carriers have, say, 70,000 cell sites covering the entire United States. You know, Verizon's talking about having 10,000 small cells just in New York City alone to make sure they get the dense coverage that required to provide everyone with a, a reliable 5G signal. These new devices also face pushback in many places across the US from both residents and officials. And regulations are still being ironed out. The rules that would have applied to a 200-foot cell tower shouldn't necessarily apply to a small cell. We want to make sure we preserve the public interest while also maintaining U.S. leadership in 5G, and that's going to require a careful rethink about the regulatory process. Although the 5G network might be a few years away from things like wireless smart factories and self-driving cars, some carriers are rolling out consumer services like mobile hotspots and home broadband, but they have offered very few details about what they might cost. A big question is whether they'll be able to charge more. You know, moving from 3G to 4G, you saw a lift, but it was, it was largely due to the fact that we were also migrating from feature phones to smartphones. Unclear whether you're going to get a, a lift from moving from 4G to, to 5G phones. And you may have just upgraded your phone, but you'll need another upgrade if you want to get 5G. And they won't be coming until next year. I mean, one benchmark uh, for uh, any new generation is probably when Apple launches their iPhone. Real uh, progress with 5G in terms of devices will probably come in 2020. It will take some time for 5G to get here, but if history is anything to go by, being first will matter for the economy. The likes of Ubers and Lyft and Facebook uh, advertising and YouTube advertising were born out of 4G and LTE. The hope is that if US takes an early lead, the ecosystem will continue to thrive and even grow stronger with emergence of 5G.